Hey everyone, welcome back. This will be another airbrushing video. In this video, I will focus on airbrushing a monotone camouflage. This particular aircraft will be in the markings of the Pakistani Air Force. It was painted a whitish color on the bottom and a dark green color on top. These sabers were referred to as F-86Es in the PAF service, not to be confused with the North American F-86E variant, totally different airplane. These aircraft were purchased from the German Air Force via Iran due to US sanctions. Okay, on to the painting. I always start by priming my models. I prime because it helps the paint grab onto something, and more importantly, it helps reveal flaws. And there were many flaws in this build that I will talk about later. Now that the primer is dry, I will start airbrushing the lighter color first. Since these aircraft were purchased from Germany and arrived to Pakistan in their original camouflage, I looked up the German Air Force camouflage colors for the F-86. For the bottom side, I used Vallejo White Gray. I really love the look of this color, and I find I don't need to pre-shade before I airbrush this color. As you can see, the white gray creates a very cool shadowy effect over a black primer. I spray it using nice thin coats and I don't blast it on. You will need to do multiple coats and stop when you are happy with the look. If you use my thinner mixture to thin the paint, each layer of paint will lay down smoothly and will not cake over the fine de detail on the model. Once the bottom side is dry, that usually takes about 15 minutes, I mask the underside of the kit using Tamiya tape and Vallejo masking liquid. Now I can start black basing on the top side. The top side of the model is where 90% of this video will focus upon. Black basing is very popular in the airplane modeling community. It creates a lovely variation in the colors airbrushed on top. It is fairly simple to do and there are two primary ways you can black base. The first method is the one I'm demonstrating in this video. I am black basing freehand with an airbrush. It doesn't need to be pretty or uniform. It is better if it's not uniform or pretty. The second method is to use airbrush templates. The templates save a lot of time, but I didn't have a template that was small enough for a 70 second airplane. Modelers argue which black basing method produces better finishes. Personally, I think there's no real difference once camo colors are applied, so go with whichever method you like best. On top of the black basing, I am going to do some color basing as well. By doing this, I will create even more variation and a vivid finish. When you color base over your black basing, use a complementary color. In this case, I am using yellow, as yellow is a complementary color to green. I am focusing my color basing on areas where there is more paint fading and wear and tear. I focus the yellow on the top side and the wing root areas, as these areas are more prone to fading due to sunlight and people walking over the areas. So I have to say I really enjoy the painting stage of model building but I hated every moment it took to get to this stage with this kit. It is not a great kit. It has fit issues. It is inaccurate. I am by no means an F-86 expert but even I could pick out the errors on this kit. The details on this kit are not crisp at all and the worst part is I kept getting ghost seams on this kit no matter what I did. I kept getting ghost seams. This was a pig of a build for me. It's like this mutant plastic on this kit which was just resistant to 
seam filling for some reason. As I mentioned before, these aircraft were purchased from Germany and delivered in their original German camo colors. Thus I went with the color callouts for the German F-86, which matched to Vallejo RML uh, 81 dark green. I'm very happy with the color callout. The dark green looks very close to the pictures I found online. A trick I wanted to demonstrate in this video is using transportator from ammo. Transportator, transportator, however the hell you say it, makes acrylic paint very translucent. This way you won't accidentally cover all your black basing uh, because of heavy handedness or by accident. If you are not comfortable airbrushing over black basing, this is something you, you should have. Transpirator makes the paint very thin, so you need to be careful when airbrushing or it will cause spider webbing. It also makes the paint a bit more fragile, so give it 40 minutes to dry at the minimum before any sort of handling. Once I was finished with the main camo color and gave the model uh, a good time to dry, I decided to do some post shading. The reason is I found more pictures of the real aircraft and there was a bit of discoloration on the upper panels. The best way to replicate that was to do some post shading. I added in some yellow to the main camo color and randomly airbrushed some upper panels to create fading. Now there's no science behind this, this is uh, just test and mix and play and you know whatever you decide looks best for your model. Um, I added in 50% yellow to the main color. I was happy with that and just decided to pick out some random panels up on the upper side. Airfix decals are by far some of the worst of any modern modeling company. I don't know why. They're just really bad. So I wanted to avoid that and thus I got aftermarket decals. Well, to my surprise, these aftermarket decals were just as bad as the kit decals. I don't understand it. What is the point of buying aftermarket decals if the company producing them doesn't produce them to a nice quality finish that is easily you know put on your model like I, I just don't get it so the way I deal with horrendous decals is first I find that you have to really 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 put dip them into hot water not a little bit of hot water but boiling hot water for about 10 to 15 seconds then get them onto the model using water tap dry everything so moisture is taken out and then apply several coats of Microset, the blue bottle, because that will help the decals start conforming and you know melting into the panel lines a little bit and all of that stuff. Because if you don't do this, they're gonna protrude and they're gonna stand out and they just look really, really bad. So here I'm applying several coats of Microset and I'm gonna give it about solid 15 minutes to eat at the decal and get it to set properly. So now we're back at the model and you can see the micro set has really, really helped. Hopefully you can. And for terrible decals, I use Mr. Mark setter and this stuff is really, really strong. So be very careful with this because it will uh, damage your paintwork if you drop tons of it onto your model, but it really helps with terrible decals like this.
time to apply the wash. Now one thing I forgot to mention here is I did apply a second gloss coat over the decals uh, to protect them uh, for the wash. And so what I'm doing here is I'm decanting Flory Model Dark Dirt Wash. I never ever dip my brush directly into the wash. You don't know what kind of contaminants are on your brush. So always decant some of it into a well and then use it from there. The reason I'm using Flory Model Wash is one, it's the dark dirt wash is really good for this camo color. It, it works really nicely with this camo and that's why I really like it. Second, Flory Model a Wash is a clay wash and it's very forgiving. So if you're new to modeling and you're not comfortable with washes yet, Flory Model Wash is uh, what I would recommend for you. It's a clay wash that will not harm the paint. You can leave it on for a year and come back and it still will come off. So no issues. It's a, it's a great wash in that regard and they have some good colors. So the wash has had a chance to dry. I've already taken it off on the bottom side there as you can see. There's two ways to take off Flory Model Wash. Um, and the first way is to just moisten the uh, paper towel with your tongue and you're going to get I would say about 90% of the wash off of the model and what happens is it creates like a slightly grimy look to the model which is you which is actually not bad actually something you may want on your model but if you moisten it with water your paper towel with water and then remove the wash it removes about 95% of the wash so it's a much cleaner look it's like a panel wash versus with the paper towel so hopefully you can see the griminess and the clean version so there's two effects you can achieve simply by doing that okay we are at the home stretch now now that the wash is done everything is done this is the final coat and we are done finished with the model here I'm mixing in 50% flat, 50% gloss, and the reason I'm doing this is I find that if you use just a flat coat, over time the flat coat darkens the color a little bit and really hides some of the work you've done. So all of the pre-shading, the black basing, all of the fading all kind of disappears over time slightly because of flat coats. And I've tested many flat coats, so it doesn't matter. I'm adding in the gloss to prevent that. This way it's not a dead flat and when it starts drying and becomes more flat it won't cause that effect. Here are the final results. Um, I actually really loved how the camo scheme came out. It looks really awesome and just looks really cool and I really love the F86. However, overall, this kit is not great. It has many inaccuracies, weak landing gear, weak um, tire uh, detail, just missing detail. Um, so overall, it's not the best kit I've ever built, and it was not as enjoyable as I wanted it to be. But I did like the camo, so 